Welcome to COVID Talks. Today I have the pleasure to have with me Dr. Klaus Reinhardt. Dr. Klaus Reinhardt is a family physician in Bielefeld, Germany, and he is the president of the German Medical Association. Welcome, Dr. Reinhardt. Welcome, thank you. Today we have about 166,000 cases of COVID-19 registered for Germany. There are close to 7,000 people who have died from COVID-19. Now, that certainly is no reason to cheer, but when compared to the outbreaks in your westerly neighboring countries, that still is a very good outcome, at least when looking at the number of deceased persons. So how do you explain this relatively good outcome for Germany? I think there are several reasons for this result. One is that we have started very early to test a lot of people so we have a good idea how many patients are really infected. This is one point. The second point, and this is a very important point, is that we have a very good capacity of intensive care. We have four times the capacity of intensive care comparing to Italy, for example, and three times that is what is in in France. And therefore, we were able from the beginning on. Uh, to treat the people uh, with, a, with the care they needed. And I think this is the second reason for uh, this result. And the third must be, or could be, the, the, uh, the fact that we have a lot of physician, physicians in the ambulance system working, uh, general practitioners and uh, specialists, and uh, therefore the, 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 we, we see it very early if a patient has become or is ill in a, in a, in a severe state, so we can react very quickly, and I think this is the third reason for this uh, very good result comparing with other, other nations and other, other uh, sanitary systems. In Germany, like in many other countries, hospitals are financed with a mechanism called DRGs, Diagnosis-Related Groups. Now, you have early on during the pandemic criticized that this method is not really suitable to prepare hospitals for the pandemic. Could you explain this a little bit? I think we have a dual system of uh, financiation of the of the uh, uh, hospital structures. We have the DRGs, the diagnosis related groups, which are uh, thought to, inve to 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 uh, to cover the the current costs of the hospital, and we have the uh, investments investment costs which should be covered by the by the state. And we must notice that the the uh, the state hasn't uh, fulfilled his duty on that point in the last years uh, in the, in, in, uh, totally and therefore a lot of hospitals came on a point where finance covered of the hospitals were not enough and uh, therefore we had the opinion that the DRGs and this dual system could not go ahead in that way we have it uh, the last years and we, but we should see that normally in the uh, state before the pandemic, uh, we had more or less uh, could discover the structures in a proper way. But we must see that all that capacities we need in this uh, special situations, uh, what a pandemic uh, naturally is, uh, we need more and we have to provide that uh, these situations could be anticipated by, uh, by us having structures uh, big enough uh, to to face these uh, special situations and therefore we see and we think in our discussion about the, the future of our sanitary system we we should see and we should think over to find a way to finance our hospital structures in a proper way to be prepared in, in future even better uh, against the pandemic situation uh, comparing with, uh, with today. Like in many other countries, we have seen reports coming from Germany about shortages of PPE, personal protective equipment. That has been a problem in hospitals, but I assume it also has been a, a problem in, in private practices in family offices and specialist offices in ambulatory care. The, the bigger problem was for the ambulatory practice uh, we, have, we haven't had the first two, three weeks or four weeks of the pandemic, we haven't had even masks to, to, to cover nose and mouth. 
and there we, we must see uh, especially uh, infections also between the, the, the physicians and uh, their uh, assisting person. During the pandemic, we have received reports that normal patients, that is patients who don't suffer from respiratory problems, would not go to clinics, would not seek their doctors if they had medical problems. Is that a phenomenon you have also observed in Germany? Yes, we did. We, we could observe that we have a percentage of 25% less of uh, myocardial infarcts and strokes we could see in Berlin. And uh, this is a, a alarming and amazing uh, point. And uh, so we, we, our, uh, our interpretation is uh, that the people are uh, afraid to be infected in the hospital structures and they avoid to go to the hospital, to join the hospital with, uh, not, if they have not so severe symptoms. And that's uh, naturally uh, at least is a damage as well. So we must assume that not seeking medical attention during COVID-19 for some people, for some patients means a worse outcome. The collateral outcome uh, of this pandemic, which is not uh, directly related to the uh, COVID-19 infection, uh, we, we can we can we don't know these days how big it is, but we we think that it should be and will be uh, in, in a very severe uh, uh, point and, and, and really great. During the past days, a big pharmaceutical company has announced that they will be able to provide a reliable antibody test for COVID-19 in large scale. Now, your Minister of Health has suggested that this may be um, a tool to allow persons who have kind of a documented immunity against COVID-19 uh, to participate in more contact-prone activities rather than stay in isolation. How do you think about that? It is a is a very intensive discussed point in these days in Germany, and uh, on the one hand, it could be an interesting uh, invention to to uh, see that uh, somebody who has uh, uh, has has done and has had this infection has has uh, developed antibodies could be uh, could work and could be. Uh, uh, Placed in some place which is very necessary, for example, in the sanitary system, the care of all the elderly people, or something like that. Uh, it, it, the problem is if we get in the same on the same hand uh, a privilege to uh, to join uh, the public life as before, and in confront of those who are hasn't been infected till now, it is a, it's a difference of, of, uh, of freedom. And I think uh, that point of uh, this discussion is very, very difficult to, to, to face. And so I personally, I would be cautious, absolutely. The strategy of flattening the curve has obviously worked for Germany. The number of new infections is going down. The number of active cases is going down rapidly. So what are your expectations now for the development of the next weeks? Yes, tomorrow the Chancellor, Chancellor Merkel and the ministry presidents of the, of the local regions uh, are sitting together to think over what things could be uh, opened again and uh, which parts of the lockdown we can, we can cancel. And uh, I think we, will, we should do that carefully, step by step. And we have to see how, uh, how is the incoming, uh, the inflow of, of severe patients in our uh, sanitary system, especially in the intens intensive care units. And when we can see that it's, that it's growing up the number, uh, we, that is, a, is an absolutely secure evidence for the growing up number of infected persons in the, in the population, the whole population. And then we have to think over which which uh, point of, of lock we have to use again. So I think in that way, we have to uh, move forward very carefully uh, to the point that we have all uh, a, a good medication to, to treat people with severe um, uh, illness uh, or uh, in a, in a vaccination. Dr. Reinhardt, thank you very much for taking the time and for giving me this interview. Thank you very much, Mr. Clover.